What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Got a video discussion here. Uh, this topic tends to come up quite a bit here at our shop. Also comes up quite a bit on a lot of forum sites, especially scubaboard.com. If you're not a member of Scuba Board, it's very simple. I'll put you a, a link in the description below. Simply click on the link, you can sign up for a membership. It doesn't cost nothing. And then that way you can get on there. Not only can you read a bunch of scuba diving articles, but you can also post questions and everything else. It's basically just a forum site for scuba divers and it's one of the largest scuba forums out there in the world today on the web. So definitely click the link, sign up for it, and uh, start asking questions and get a lot of information. I'm a strong advocate of scuba board. I think it's a great resource if you know how to read between the lines sometimes. Uh, however, but definitely sign up for it. So getting back to the topic at hand here, if you can't tell by the description down below or the title of this video, this is going to be on the anti-scuba diver. And there's several different types of anti-scuba divers out there. There's only one that I'm going to talk about. But let's look at a couple of examples real quick. First, we have the anti-scuba diver that has absolutely no knowledge of scuba diving or anything about it. And they maybe they assume that we're out there polluting the environment or putting things in the water. And so they do everything they can to keep us from diving. Uh, then we have the anti-scuba diver. We our shops on a lake and we have a lot of fishermen that tend to get upset when we're scuba diving their fishing holes when they get in there and so they they try to cause trouble and, and what they don't understand is public water we can be there just like they can and we try to be respectful we if we notice they're fishing we're gonna go away to they're done fishing but if we get there first they come in and they they disobey laws they don't um, you know they don't abide by the law of the die flags and every state especially here in the United States all the states here have general statutes or laws stating that both have to stay away from the dive flag so that's another type of anti-diver but the one that I want to talk about the most and what this video is going to be about is the anti-diver that happens to be a certified scuba diver and that sounds so crazy that someone can be or certified to go scuba diving and he's an avid diver and he gets out there and he dives a lot but at the same time he becomes an anti-diver and whether or not he realizes he's doing that it puts a strain on the industry as a whole and it doesn't allow the industry to grow the sport if you will of scuba diving so let me give you an example if you will of an, an anti-diver oh, let me change it let me tell you a story that that happened to me if you will where um, I'm, I'm a big big deer hunter I love to deer hunt during deer season here in North Carolina and I like to travel and deer hunt but I actually become an anti hunter at one point while I still love to deer hunt at the same time and then I'm gonna relate it back to this topic just to kind of get the point across to you of how a certified scuba diver can be an anti scuba diver at the same time so like I said I'm a big-time deer hunter I hunt every hunting season that we get here in North Carolina whether it's small game to squirrels or ducks or all the way up to bear and deer and boar and everything else but during deer season we have three types of deer seasons we have an archery season we have a muzzleloader or black powder season and we also have a rifle season now up until a few years back during the archery season meaning you sit here and hunt with a bow and arrow during that archery, archery season, you could only hunt with a, a traditional a long bow, a recurve, or a compound type bow. You couldn't hunt with a crossbow unless you had a medical condition that, that for some reason you just couldn't draw back a bow. And you had to have a doctor's permit or a sign-off saying that you could hunt with that crossbow. You had to have like a specialized permit you got from the state. and You had your doctor, blah, 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 blah. So now they've got it to where you can hunt with it at any time during archery season. It doesn't matter. Anybody can hunt with it. But before that, there were a lot of archery hunters, myself included, that didn't really like that. We felt that the people that were hunting with the crossbow had an unfair advantage towards us, and we just felt like they wasn't as good of a hunter as we were, and we were out here practicing with our bows, and we could draw it back, and, and we didn't want that. We A lot of us did not want them to bring that crossbow and, you know, fine, make their own season, but don't bring it in. Don't let them hunt when we did. And what I wasn't realizing was that made me an anti-hunter. Instead of embracing that and, and making it easier to get more people into the hunting sport, I was actually pushing them away and saying, no, 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 we don't want you. We don't want you here. We don't want that type of hunting. And as a hunter, that made me an anti-hunter. The exact same thing is happening in the scuba field, and it's been happening for a very, very long time. You may not notice it in your area, 
But like I said, if you go on scuba boards, you read a lot of articles, you'll see it there. If you're in the cave country down in Mexico or the Florida area, you'll definitely see it there. And I'm sure over across the big pond over in Europe, they probably have the same problem that we do here. There's two major types of divers, all right? There, there's the DIR style and there's the just a regular old recreational uh, scuba diver, if you will. And I'm not going to sit here and say anything bad majorly about both, but I am going to talk about the philosophy of each diver and how they're kind of pitted against each other and and they they push the other one out of the way if you will and they become an anti-diver so let's kind of look at the philosophy real quick of the dir style and then we'll look at the philosophy of the recreational just typical generic diver if you will I'll, I'll, i'm going to call them the commercially based diver because they use more commercially based equipment than the dir uses just more a traditional uh no frills thrills type of commitment and, and both ways are perfectly okay to use but it's that philosophy that that kind of catches them and, and it puts that person into a mindset where they push the other person away and they say no i don't want that so with the dir style you know they believe in the single piece harness webbing where there's absolutely no failure points or you've eliminated most of the failure points it's it's kind of a one size fits all type thing and it's a great way to dive because it is custom to you and we do preach in the scuba industry that you do we, we do preach for the, the custom-made gear because it fits you, it makes you comfortable, and it's only going to make you safer. Now, also with the DIR philosophy, they believe in redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. No matter what, there's always redundancy. If you're diving doubles, there's your redundant air system. Um, <clears throat> if you're diving, say, in a, a single bladder system with your um, bladder with your wing and you got a dry suit there's your redundant lift or you carry a certain pound lift bag there's your redundant lift system there um, they they plan everything on tables they back it up with the computer or vice versa there's your redundancy there so it's very very safe the dir community is a very safe community and they do want to make divers the, the best divers out there with the commercially based uh, dive industry or side of the things though you know they use more of the commercial BC's that have all the weight pockets already built in all these extra D rings all these extra features to where the DIR says we don't need those extra features that that's there it, it's kind of the add-ons if you will to, to anything that to makes diving a little bit funner not necessarily more technical but funner um, that to me the, the commercial side of it is more all fun and games to where this side over here, the DIR style, it's it's more scientific. Let's get to the point, take care of it. And and once again, I'm not talking bad about the DIR community and or the commercialized recreational community. What I'm talking about is the mindset that sometimes those people get. And it's very difficult to say that I'm not talking about the communities when it's only one or two bad apples in that bunch because there's bad apples on both sides so some of the topics that come up that make one or the other the anti-diver is simply if you go on scuba board and you read articles and you get these guys that say all right the dir style that's the only way to do it if you you can only do it in the back plate and wing you can't do it no other way the only way to kick is you know you can't do these long flutter kicks because you're going to stir up the bottom you can only do it this way only 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 that that's what keeps coming up that word and and it's not true there, there's more than one way to skin a cat, if you will. And, and if you tell a person that is the only way to do it, you're going to scare them off. Also with the DIR, they, they believe in, in all the knowledge up front. Get, get as much knowledge as you can up front. And the technology part of things is it, it's considered, if you will, a failure point to where... They want everything black and white, very simple, redundant systems, which is a great way to be. It's definitely a safe way. Once again, it's not the only way. And with the digital age nowadays, sometimes you're alienating the, the other side of the spectrum, if you will. You're alienating them and you're pushing them away, telling them this is the only way that we can do it. If you don't do it, you're unsafe, you're unsafe. And that's simply not true. So in that sense, that makes this side over here the anti-diver. You're pushing them away and saying, we don't even want to be associated with you. We, we don't want you diving with us. We it, unless you, It's either our way or the highway. So now let's take it over to the other side. The other side is more the fun and games type side. 
they wear commercially based gear. Um, you know, it's, it's the standard jacket style BCD with a weight pocket or even a back and plate system, if you will, with weight pockets. Or they may even wear the back plate and wing system, but they've added all these extra features to it. Um, that, that this side over here would say, well, you don't need that. That's dangerous. That's a failure point. Those are plastic buckles versus metal buckles. But, but it's not so scientific to them. These guys over here, they're looking at it as more, it's a recreational, this is a fun sport, I don't do it for a living, I'm not going deep, I'm not going in caves, I'm not doing all this extreme type of diving, I just want to breathe underwater and go have fun. But the downside is, is they kind of look at this crowd over here and say, well, you're a bunch of know-it-alls, you're snobs, we don't like you, stay away from us, just, we, we don't even want to be associated. Let, let's push that DIR community over here in the corner and just not associate them with us at all. So in, a, in return, that takes the commercialized recreational diver and, and makes him the anti-diver towards this group over here. So essentially both sides, not necessarily the philosophies behind their sides, but the mindset that, that both divers, and, and I say divers because it, it, it is multiple divers, but it's not the whole group as a whole, both divers become anti-divers instead of us embracing the entire system and us coming together as scuba divers. I get asked all the time, well, how do you dive? Do you believe in the DIR philosophy or, or do you only wear the commercialized stuff? Um, you know, what, what do you wear when you personally dive and all this? And, and I tell the truth, I dive the system that works best for me. Now, I personally dive both. I have that DIR setup. I have the commercialized setup. And depending on what I'm diving on, depending on what my job is, am I teaching an open water class? Maybe I'm teaching a, a deep class. Maybe I'm teaching a public safety class or a salvage class. Or maybe I'm just teaching a basic rescue class. Whatever I'm doing, whatever my job is, that's the type of gear that I wear for that specific job. Now, I personally believe in the DIR system or way or philosophy, whatever you want to call it, because I believe it is truly safe. It is out there for a reason. It keeps divers extremely safe. It keeps them redundant or they have redundant systems all throughout, no matter what you're wearing. Um, but I also believe in the fun of the sport and not making the sport itself too technical. If you want to... Um, Further your knowledge in scuba diving. If you want to become even more safe, and I want to word it like that, even more safe, because I believe both sides are just as safe as the other, but you can become even more safe in each one simply by getting more and more knowledge. Okay, But I don't believe that this system over here has the best gear and this system over here has the best gear because they ain't, two, they ain't no two human beings on this earth that are identical. Even identical twins are different in one way, shape, or form. That means you may have the perfect setup, perfect balanced rig, DIR setup, but if your body type is not right or you have some type of physical defect, if you will, to where you just simply cannot get into that system. Well, let's say if you have a single piece webbing and you just simply, you got sh so many shoulder problems, you literally can't chicken wing your arm in, you can't run your arms in, you can't put your arms behind you to get in that system. You may need that quick release system so that you can be in this upright position. Your buddy can do your quick release on your shoulder strap toss it over your shoulder and hook it up. So you may need that system. So I don't believe that one system is better than the other, other than one is better than the other when it comes to very specific type of diving, but there's no one system that makes it better than the other as a general or as a whole picture, if you will. So when we have that mindset that this is the right way, you guys are wrong, go away, we don't want you here, you've become that anti-diver. When we have that mindset, hey, we're the right ways. You guys are doing extreme stuff. You're, you're out here. You're not being safe, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're going too deep. You're, you're going way back. In you're doing all this really, really dangerous stuff. We don't want you. You've become the anti-diver. So it's actually on both sides. Now, if we look at scuba as a whole, and we don't really break it down 
we're all scuba divers. We are all lumped into this big group. And I think one thing that contributes to the an the certified diver, anti-diver mindset is, is when we look at that whole, that scuba diving as a whole, and we break it up into individual groups, such as the recreational side, the professional side, the DIR side, and then I'm gonna call it the specialty side, and I'll talk, I'll give you a brief uh, instance of what I mean over here. So you got the recreational, the, the diver, the avid divers, they get certified, they dive all the time just for fun, they go on trips, they do stuff like that, they take a bunch of courses or whatnot. Then of course you have the professional side of divers, uh, your dive masters, instructors who work in the industry, and then you, of course you got your your technical line or technical divers. Most of them, of course, your DIR guys. Um, the, you know they're over here, and then of course you got your specialty divers. What I kind of call the working divers, such as public safety divers, commercial divers, people who scuba dive for a living, but they're they're not professional as far as teaching. That's what they do for a career. The, those individual groups, sometimes those individual groups forget. Hey, we're all certified. We all learn how to breathe underwater. Yes, we all have different um, aspects of the diving or, or we all have different reasonings for being underwater, but we're all scuba divers. And we have to remember, scuba diving as a whole, we are a family and we need to stick together and we want our family to grow. We want to bring those people in. So when you have a philosophy that my way is the only way, it's the safest way, understand you may be correct it may be the only way but just for you you may be correct it may be the safest way for the type of diving that you're doing or for uh what you're wearing it's the safest way to do something for the gear that you're wearing but it's not the only way for a person to go underwater and breathe and that's why we become scuba divers so that we can go underwater and breathe whether you're working teaching exploring or just having a good time we all just want to go underwater and breathe. So please, I, I, I want to plead out to you guys, don't become a certified anti-scuba diver. Just remember, we are all divers. We are all part of a family. And yes, we will have our own individual philosophies and our own way of believing. But understand that you will become that anti-diver one day when you tell somebody, this is the only way. You can't do it any other way. We don't want you here. The truth is we do want you here because without bringing new people into the industry, the industry will never grow. And that's what we want. We want the scuba industry to grow. You know, we want to certify millions and millions and millions of divers every single year. And we're doing a good job. But that anti-diver on both sides is pushing more people away than it should. So try your best not to become the anti-diver. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or you just think I'm off my rocker and I'm crazy, simply put it down in the comment section below. Let me know your feelings. If you've met somebody like this or if this is the way you believe, tell me why that's why you believe. Tell me why you like to be that anti-diver for whatever reason. I want to hear it from you. Uh, I want to know your, your thought process on it. Um, but guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button or heck, if you don't like this video, hit the dislike button. That just lets me know you're watching the videos one way or the other. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.